Hello, and welcome to the Info Runners podcast. I'm joined today by Execute and Dyson. And today we're going to talk about some sleeper ships in Star Citizen and how you can get in on the ground floor with this new flight model coming. Ground floor. I like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, just a different colloquialism. I'm not used to that term. Um, yeah, so what are we talking about? We're talking about some ships that we think are going to be good down the line, um, especially with the new flight combat model changes coming up, yeah? Yeah, next patch is going to be big. Uh, a lot of stuff are coming, but the flight model is going to be make or break for this game because this is primarily a flight game, despite what a lot of people are saying with all this ground stuff. And it's really going to change how we view different ships, and it's going to really allow them to then start to focus on balancing some of these ships out as things go. Because right now, there's no point in doing balance if you're basically throwing everything out. I think it's important to state, though, that the flight model, while it is changing, it won't be the last iteration. They will change and improve. But I think a lot of these ships that we're going to mention here are ships that have been in a bad spot for a while and I think quite honestly if you kind of work this through in your head you might look at them in a different light hopefully hopefully we, we can do that for you guys today <laughs> so in a nutshell what you have um, with this new flight model is you have a lot of ships that are like the human style ships they're like airfoils they fly really fast in a straight line but they have a, a harder time changing direction and so that's going to change the way fundamentally that combat takes place. Whereas right now you can thrust in any direction. And if you're an arena commander or even the PU, it's very easy to turn by yawing versus pitching and rolling, which is how it's done in actual dogfighting. And that's all going to go away with 3.5. I guess. Um, should we actually talk about some ships? <laughs> or should we... Do you want to start well, with the I, ships, I, or what, what do you want to talk about specifically? Before we do that, I do think it, it would be important to mention something that Osiris was really talking about, uh, which was uh, the fact that you don't have to be more skilled in the new flight model. The new flight model is really going to make you take into account the strengths and weaknesses of your ships, as well as have to learn new things. Like right now, coupled, decoupled... Uh, is going to is something that's kind of optional to use and it's going to become really big in some ways with your human ships and uh cyrus i'm gonna let you take about some of the other points that you had because you had a better job of you did a better job of explaining it well yeah to, just to pick up on that point it's um with the ships that are going to be very good at flying fast in a straight line but struggle with maneuvering it's going to become more important for you as a pilot to be able to aim your weapons uh, at an angle of deflection relative to your travel vector and with gimbals uh, or <clears throat> sorry uh, gimbals are going to become a very important facet of gameplay whereas right now a lot of people prefer to lock their weapons straight ahead and just turn their ship to face what they're shooting at um, and also like you said, coupled and decoupled, that's going to become a crucial skill to flying in less in atmosphere uh, for human ships, but in space, because you can be traveling in a direction and turn your ship still traveling in that direction and firing at uh, your target. You're going to have to do that in order to be competitive in space. I think we're going to see a lot of different types of man uh, maneuverability, though. That's that's my 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 take on it like um a lot of the human ships as you state are going to take time to turn but i think we're going to see some of the alien ships come in and they're going to turn in different ways um and i think exactly. that's going to be important and it's going to it's almost going to harken a little bit back to the world war ii area where it's trying to get on the back of your your enemy i think it's going to be a bit more like that rather than this uh jousting type of <laughs> stuff we see at the moment that's just a little yeah. bit weird for me um, so I, I am very much looking forward to it. Well, one thing that I do have to say that's going to make this new flight model really special is instead of now it's looking, you look at ships, you don't, you look at the stats. What are its shields? What are its weapons? It, it it's not going to be as much uh, cut and dry by saying, well, this ship has hands down better weapons, and 
is maybe a little bit more tanky or maybe slightly more maneuverable. It's really going to be more, drama dr more dramatic in the way this ship is tankier, but it's definitely going to be less maneuverable than this ship here. And you're going to start seeing it, each ship fly a little bit differently. So you have more options amongst your light fighters, heavy fighters, medium fighters. You're going to have a little bit more choice for your play style. I, I, I think that also carries back to what I was saying about maneuverability. I think you are going to see different ships move in diff different ways just so they can have a difference, if that makes a week of sense. Um, it is. Maneuverability, I, I feel like, is going to be king in combat. If you can stay out of your opponent's uh, reticle and you can keep him in yours, it doesn't matter how good your shields are or your armor is, or even if their guns are better than yours, you're going to win that. Yeah. And and you'll yeah. see that counterbalanced as well. So a ship that might be super maneuverable be, might have really weak shields or weak armor um, to make up for that fact. But, but vice versa, a ship that's terrible and not very good at maneuvering might have really, you know, tanky armor and tanky shields to make up for the fact that it takes yeah. them a week to get on, uh, on point. So, yeah. Well, they've only got to shoot you once be... and you're gone. So, you know. Well, it also might be different when you start looking at atmospheric flight model, because one thing we were discussing, and this actually had some debate, is like what ships are going to be better where in atmosphere is because you have to take into account not only maneuverability, but duration. Just because you have like you could you take let's say you take the uh, one of the uh, Zion ships down into atmosphere, yeah, it's gonna be more maneuverable, but is it gonna be eating up fuel at a faster rate than maybe a human ship? And that may determine what ship you take down into what uh, what place. I think what you said there about um, duration is really important. I think it's not just gonna be one factor. Like, okay, now we're in atmosphere. This is king. I think it's gonna be. Um, even time and place like if you go into a nebula and a nebula a nebula how much is that and that's a special nebula what if that changes the law of physics or something like that you know and what 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 flight mechanics will work inside that nebula you might get a particular ship that's crap everywhere else but it's really good in that one particular nebula because it has x engines or whatever so i i, I do think yeah. it's i think it's place and duration and i also think it's maneuverability i think it will be a, and, and weapons will be the other part of it too obviously and that will really play into account with why the new flight models are going to make things less cut and dry and when buying a fighter or looking at fighters or even your larger ships because that that will affect what you pick there because right now you think you have a rough time in atmosphere with your reclaimer <laughs> wait till you get the new flight model should we move on to some ships then that we uh there's only a few but let's um you want to kick it off cyrus sure and uh dyson kind of touched around it um the xeon ships i think are going to be those sleeper ships that we titled this episode after uh, they're gonna fly more similarly to just about how everything flies in the current flight model because of their thruster configuration they're going to be able to thrust in different directions and they're going to move totally differently than a ship with a huge central thruster that is good at flying fast in a straight line but has to slow down to turn or pitch and roll they're just going to be dancing around a lot of these other ships and that's not to say that if you're an experienced pilot you can't deal with that but like we said earlier you're going to have to get good at piloting a human ship if you want to be able to deal with this sort of advanced Xeon maneuvering technology it's very clear i think that's the case because at the moment the the scout it's been a running joke for a really long time it it it, it explodes in a couple of hits and it's gone but when you add that maneuverability that was always talked about in the concept sale uh, it, it obviously will put, take it to another level and yeah if you can just never get hit you're not gonna die it's that's so cool um, and I, I, I think that's what this ship is. Like, I know they beefed the guns up to, I think it was fixed size threes from my last memory. Correct me if I'm wrong, I probably am. But um, the gimbals always seem to me to make so much more sense on a ship that was highly renewable because it can just keep that bead on you as it turns. 
Uh, the big one I've been, I've been talking about is actually also the Banu Defender. Uh, Banu Defender, while not necessarily as fancy as uh, the Xeon ships, it still has Xeon Thruster technology, and I expect it to be very maneuverable uh, combined with the tachyon guns this thing is going to be very impressive and with a second gunner combined the pilot focusing on maneuverability and that second gunner using the gimbals agreed e even if it is a uh much less maneuverable than a xeon ship it's still more maneuverable than a human ship that's going to give it a massive advantage in combat i'm, a I'm actually curious like with a ship like the defender where it has a second get dedicated gunner. Like, how gimbaled are the gimbaled guns? Like, are they more like turrets? Like, could they fire mm. like a full f 90 degrees it, to the left? Because that would be really it interesting. It doesn't look like that. But, but, but if it doesn't it, look like that, just, see it's just, just, just speculate for a small second. What correct if could, me if though? I'm wrong here, but it not the deal with those tachyon cannons that their, their rate of fire or the distance that the the projectile travels is like basically the speed of light. like it's, it's, it's almost no lead with your pip is that right yeah I, I the last thing i remember reading about them was they were like long-range sniper weapons that was the last thing i remember yep. they were designed for keeping keeping things at bay so it sounds like it's a ship that kind of stays on the fringes and shoots in rather than um goes toe to toe with you but i could be wrong um but like just speculate for a second if that ship could literally shoot completely to the left of the direction it was traveling that would be amazing and again it would make that ship different from any other ship just purely because the 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 combo of the the gun and turret and it might be a thing because they're trying to make you know a greater divide between the different types of ships i don't know i could be completely wrong and i probably am but i'm just thinking outside the box maybe I wish you're correct on that. Uh... All right. Well, the next one's a little controversial. Well, I think it is anyway. <laughs> um, and and this is really brought up by Dyson, but we we got everyone give their opinion here. So Dyson believes that the Vandal ships will be sleeper ships. Please explain, sir. Well, the Vandal ships. I I feel like while they still have that forward thruster style configuration of the human ships. They're built by an alien race that can uh, handle quite a bit. And I, I really feel like you're going to have some high maneuverability from a ship like that that a human ship is not going to have. And I feel partly because, again, these are ships that are made from a race that can handle probably a much different style of G-Force. So it might be interesting to see how that handle, but then again, it may not work that way because uh, if the ship is not specifically built for that, Humans aren't built for those G-forces, for those uh, extreme maneuvers. But if you fly it now, they, they are really maneuverable. and they I don't know, they, they just fly different. They make turns and everything in a much faster rate than your human counterpart. It's possible. Oh, Saris, what do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, I guess it depends on whether or not CIG ever lets you play as a non-human but because I guess your point, Dyson, was that humans physiologically can't withstand the same G-forces that the Vanduul can. And so a Vanduul is capable of maneuvering that ship more aggressively than a human pilot would. I, I'm assuming that based on the way, because right now they seem to fly way more maneuverable. Like if you take the blade out, I really feel like that thing turns on a dime compared to a Gladius. Might and be, might be if, lighter, made of different materials. That could be a factor as well. I don't know. I don't know why, but when I when I fly that and then I fly Gladius, I, I feel a noticeable difference on it, how it just like flies. And I feel like if that translates into the new flight model, it means either these ships have completely different thrusters or they're right now being flying like they're supposed to if a Vandal was flying. I think that a lot of that is probably going to change with the new flight model because one of the things you have is the John Pritchett designed flight model the, des the developers who are programming in values are programming in these insane thrust values for all of the thrusters and engines. And I think that that's going to be the thing principally that's changing with this flight model. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Look, the other thing I want to add is what I said before the show. And I said before the show is that to me, the Vandal feel like a Banu Drake manufacturer, as in a cheap man's Banu. <laughs> 
<laughs> they 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 just don't feel they feel like they're cheap industrial slapped together they, they, they almost look like the the mad max of space they like they've just you know <laughs> chrome war boys ready to go off and yeah they just um i don't know there's just something about them that I, I i don't see i don't scream quality when i see them but i will say the newer versions are looking a lot more polished in there especially with what we saw with the blade they, they have a bit more quality to them and i definitely feel that they are coming back up in their quality um Hopefully when we see the new ships come out, yeah. Um, totally agree with what Osiris just said though, by the way. Um, I believe that they're just a bit overtuned because of the current flight model. Well, you, you never know, but it's still very... I'm going to do the next one because I actually thought of this one. Um, well, not thought of this one, but I brought it up. I, I kind of put it under MISC, but it really kind of falls down to the Reliant, and again, that's because of the engine technology that MISC has to deal with the Zion. Um, and that's that the, the Reliant, unlike most human crafts that are kind of horizontal and uh, a lot better at being vertical, because it's a blade, does that mean it'll it'll turn a lot faster because it's this giant uh, wing? Um, don't know if that'll be, but it, it kind of catches me as something between a, a standard human ship and a, a Zion ship because of the, the flexibility. And again, just, just something that's different to differentiate the flight model. Well, uh, do you guys think I'm crazy? You probably are. Okay, I am crazy. Well, but with no, this, I mean, I... you look at it, you'd think that it would yaw very quickly, whereas human ships, like we said, they get a, to pitch and roll, or the Xi'an ship just thrust in a different direction. I think that, yeah, that's probably going to be somewhere in between. And it's hard to guess where, but it might would even, probably outmaneuver a Gladius, for example. Might even be able to do both because it rotates. So when it's in its horizontal mode, it's more standardized. And when it goes that way, well, what they call fight mode, but it probably mm -hmm. can do both if you if you twist between. I don't know. Might, I'm hoping it might Just... be a redeeming thing for the Reliant because let's be honest, it's in a really bad place. Even after the rework, which yeah, was, some... it was abysmal. Um, and I, I saw a post today by Board Gamer saying, and I totally agree with him, um, let's hope that the, uh, the variants are at saving grace, because at the moment it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. Well, well what I want to say about the Reliant specifically is, 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 I feel like it's actually instead of side to side, it's going to be more up to down if you look the way the thrusters bend. I feel like it's going to have more of an up to down, but, but I do agree it's going to be better than the human ships just based on the way the engines are maneuverability wise. Using your own argument against you, but if you put it in atmosphere, the wind, it, it has to block it because it's a giant fin. So yeah, I'll, <laughs> he, before the show, he, giant kept, he kept bringing up the atmosphere thing like every five seconds on every ship, but yeah, I'll use it against you in that route. But yeah, you're right. It could, it could go know. either way. But uh, it gives me hope, though, with this new flight model, that the that your uh, Reliant Sin, the combat version, is actually going. To, is it the Sin? I think it is. Uh, the the sense Tana. Is, the, the, the Tana. And the Sin's the science, but the Tana is actually going to be useful because it needs it needs to be at least viable, in my opinion. Instead of one of those throwaway ships that's in the game, you rarely see it. It looks cool, but it's not useful at it's another weird ship too it's a little bit like the 325a it just it doesn't belong to that manufacturer it's the only kind of real combat ship that they have so yeah let's hope it's um a bit better than it should be um i think the only other one <coughs> sorry star wars b oh yeah that's what it definitely reminds me of. it's definitely got b-wing vibes the last ship i, I think we did talk about the Zion ships, but I want to split them up and talk about them real quickly. So we've got the the Santaki I and the Cartel L. Um, the Santaki I, I, I think is going to be for the moment anyway with a new flight model. If it's what we're saying, it'll probably become the cream of the crop at the moment, um, unless you're able to get something like a Banu and keep it at distance, or something like. Um, the, the, the Super Hornet is going to have that armor, so it's going to be more tanky. And I, I, I question the new flight model. Here's, a, here's one that I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but what I'm talking about is this meta. Um, where does the Saber sit here as well? Because of this stealth gameplay, I just don't... I don't see stealth play, gameplay as a real thing. I don't... 
see, like if, you, if uh, I can still see uh, physically see you, I can shoot you. Right, with the saber, uh, stealth isn't going to benefit you once you've been uh, sighted by the enemy and you're in a dogfight. Uh, it's just a matter of traversing space to and. You get you get first shot. That's all you get. I I will actually disagree for two things: missiles for one, because missiles are going to rely on IR uh, and e uh, your, basically your uh, EM, and of course your profile. Plus two is low profile in combat unless you're. Getting on top of it where it's really wide it is very thin and narrow and if it's able to maneuver anywhere it's a thin and narrow slice to try to hit versus a bigger box if that makes any sense so while it's not stealth stealth it's going to definitely probably help in the missile department when someone's trying to shoot a missile at you and get that and it's probably going to help when you're trying it to actually shoot something that's thin versus something that's a little bit thicker and bold. Yeah, I guess there's some parts we'll have to wait and see, but I, I'm i not sold on stealth yet, but I, I could be convinced, we'll see. So, I want to bring it back to the Santaki Eye and the Katalal now, real quick. Do you guys still think that, that when the, the flight, new model, flight model comes in, it, it'll move towards the Santaki Eye being the... Because at the moment, it's a very much a, a Super Hornet meta, and it's been that way for a really, really long time. Do you guys see it now mm -hmm. a, a shift more towards these alien ships, and specifically the Santaki I do. I'll say it again. I see the reason for that as maneuverability being the most important uh, attribute for a ship to have for combat dominance if you can be anywhere or if you can avoid being where your enemy is targeting and you can keep them in your sights then you have a huge and that's why i think those ships well in particular the santaki eye because of its armament and uh dyson had a point about the cartwall's weapons that we can get to as well that it's a little bit of a difference I think we can, like, we agree that at the very least, this, uh, the Cartel is actually going to come up a lot in quality. Um, well, I, I, my my question for you guys is, where do you think it's going to sit? Just specifically the Cartel, where where's that going to come up to? Is that going to is that going to come up to uh, just under a Super Hornet, or could it potentially take on a Super Hornet? No, I don't think it's going to ever be able to touch a Super Hornet because I don't. Th it's not designed as a combat vessel. It it has, while it's very maneuverable, it still has pea shooters, and all it takes is to, for you to get hit by the Super Hornet because you are a huge profile. You're like this big block in space that all it takes is your wing, him to hit you once, maybe knock out one at one or two, your thrust, and you're, you're going to be in trouble. It's it's a scout, as you were saying, execute. It's its entire role is to deal jump points and I'll let you hit that. I don't think it'll ever be a top tier fighter. I think it'll just be those it'll be able to save itself if it's attacked by something that's not maybe your high end fighter but maybe a light fighter. What I'm actually trying to steer towards with the cartel is going to lead on to my next kind of point and I do want to talk a bit about guns. Um, we have yet to see a ship that actually doesn't have any. Um, and we were doing a little bit of theorizing before the show, is there an actual reason for every ship to have a gun? Like, like, uh, what was the mentality, you, you, what was the wording you used, Osiris? Mutual destruction? Along those lines? Right. The whole, I think the whole design philosophy at CIG for putting guns on every single ship is, yeah, mutually assured destruction. Like, if there's you have to respect a ship that can shoot back at you, but like D Dyson was just saying about the car to all, nobody is afraid of those size one guns on that ship, almost to the point where you it doesn't even need to like they, worry about them. You can they, just go right. It came out with size ones. I think it's up to size three fixed now on them. So size three fixed, oh, okay. two size twos, but still two size twos is pea shooters. Yeah. But I, I do question, like, some of the stuff they've brought in now, too. We've seen them bringing in uh, targeting of Pacific engines. So if you can target a Pacific area on a ship, those two size weapons might be more deadly. If you can hit that one spot and take him out, 
it might change the gameplay quite a bit. I don't know. I to, like, if you're just trying to kill him, like, if you're in a wow. scout versus a hornet, I don't think you're going to try and disable the hornet. I think you're just going to try and kill it. Or, 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 or stop it so you can get out of it. Um, so, I, 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 can, I can see a good pilot that knows how to fly that shit well taking out a hornet. I really, really can. Um, and we've seen it already, like a Gladius versus a Hornet, Pete, there are people in Gladius that can take it out. I just think until this new um, flight model comes online, I don't think we get have ever seen the full potential of these ships. Well, just going back to that, the gun concept, it, it really leads to the question of why does it have, why aren't we removing those guns and maybe having, like you were saying, tractor beams or maybe a some scanners or even just replace them and toss two missiles because if you're in a ship let's say you're in a your basic starter ship you're in um and you're attacked you you're not going to be able to really deal any damage to some of these uh, uh if you're attacked by a combat vessel you don't want to so you're wasting your time turning around trying to shoot at it to when you're running and, and your guns aren't really a threat you'd be better off with maybe uh just say a missile fire a missile it has to dodge the missile it gives you a few extra seconds to get away or you're better off with some, a better scanning suite it just doesn't some of these ships it just seems like why have guns when you can have extra utility or just wait it's a waste of space i'm, I'm thinking of the 100i combat variant that they brought out and they added one size one <laughs> missile to each wing and heaps of, everyone complained because it just was not of enough of an upgrade i i and and, and if, if they know the missile's coming they just chaffed or flare and it's it, it's nothing so until missile gameplay kind of improves i'm not i'm not really sold on that point but you know um well it's well, better than it's, having it's those worth, useless guns it's worth mentioning briefly and we don't have to get into too much detail but since we are referring to ships that are going to benefit from the changes to the flight model. I think that uh, passively, the missile and turret gameplay are both going to become better uh, with this new flight model. So it's curious to see how much they're going to change. But like uh, similarly to gimbaled and decoupled, um, having a ship like a Hurricane with a, a dedicated turret or a Super Hornet, that's going to really help mitigate the, that ship's lack of maneuverability relative to the Jean ships as well. That's another important thing. The uh, Reliant also has a turret on it. So hopefully mm -hmm. that another, just another string to its bow, so to speak, to make it a bit stronger. I'm, I'm hoping a lot of these things that we see as problems in the current flight model are gonna put a, as we said at the start, put everything on its head um, and make a lot of these ships that have been really down and out for a while. And I know some of the ships aren't even in the game yet, but the ones that have been down and out, they come back up to the surface at least equal don't have to come in front of everything else but just at least equal to everything else would be really nice well and one thing that'll also make this new flight model interesting will actually be to see what type of gun loadouts people start equipping at that point in time because with a new flight model will come new ways of flying and will possibly open up uh, more opportunities for different variations in your gun loadouts because if you're worried about if you're now going from this compared to jousting at longer ranges, it it may start bringing some of those more shock shock and all weapons into play, or Scatter some of the guns. ships that are more maneuverable. Yep, or uh, your more maneuverable ships might want to have something that has a higher burst rate versus your ships that can. Uh, because, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say you're more maneuverable. Actually, I would actually say your ships that aren't as maneuverable because they're only going to get a limited window versus a ship that can keep more consistent. So it's going to see a lot more variation, I think, and more hope for customization. Anything that removes jousting, I'm all for. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to add before we wrap up? Nope. Sorry, wrap it up, please. <laughs> with a bow. Um, with well, a bow. We've, we've got like to hear from you. Huh? I said with a bow. It's got to be with a bow. Gotta with a bow. Oh, Christmas is over now. We can't. It's my birthday. Get away. Oh, well, well, happy birthday. It's not my birthday. I was just happy <laughs> birthday to you. It's not my birthday. Nice Shut up. 
Any chance to sing? No, it's not my birthday. Okay, sorry, I was just joking. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> um, let us know in the comments what you think about uh, anything we said, what you think the sleeper ships are, how you think that the flight model is going to change things, and um, if you agree with us, disagree with us, and join us on Discord as well. We'd love to hear. I want to see some comments about uh, what you guys think about the the sleeper ships we've suggested. And is there any other ships that you guys see as sleeper ships, whether it be from the flight model or something else that we haven't mentioned today? Um, yeah. Anything else you guys want? We do read your comments, so yep. please, please, please continue to write. All right. Wrap it up. All right. Well, uh, I've been Osiris. This has been Execute. And to the bottom left has been Die. <laughs> Say goodbye. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>